Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Is wrestling. Welcome everyone to another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling with Cody Deaner. I am Cody Deaner and I am a professional wrestler. I'm a professional wrestling producer. I'm a professional traveling motivational speaker and I'm a father of four very cute kids. You hear a lot of them in the commercials halfway through these episodes. And I am a proud husband to a beautiful wife that is working hard right now and allowing me to record this for you and tickle your eardrums with this beautiful intro <laughs> to this podcast. Is it beautiful? I don't know. You you be the judge. If you're watching this right now on YouTube at youtube.com slash Cody in your podcast, you might not use the word beautiful. I, I don't know. Maybe you will. But I just want to thank you for joining me for another week of wrestling as life is wrestling before we go any further i just want to tell you some ways you can support this podcast that i'm bringing to you for free each and every week on your podcast platform of choice you can go to pro wrestling tees.com slash cody deaner get yourself a t-shirt you can go to cameo.com slash cody deaner and get yourself a personalized video from me to you or you can go to patreon.com slash cody deaner and be a supportive patron if that's you Thank you. If that's you, you've already listened to, to, the, to today's guest because you got part one and two with David Sahadi early and ad free over a week ago over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. And you got all the early and ad free episodes each and every week. No ads, no intro, outro stuff. You just got the conversation. If that's you, you want to do that, support me plus get tons of bonus content that i keep uploading over on my patreon then become a patron lots of different ways you can support over there so please just go check it out see if it's for you it's at patreon.com slash cody deaner i don't want you to support me i want you to support our sponsors our major sponsorship that i dropped on you guys on last week's episode with a company that I believe in not just a company. I'm like, yeah, okay, you're going to sponsor me and give me some money and you're going to give me some cool swag and yada, yada, yada. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. This is about me deciding to support a local Canadian company that gives back to its community and only wants to put out high quality products while also giving back to the community and sourcing their materials from local North American companies. I'm talking about rest when dead clothing. If you're listening to this, you can't see this hat I'm wearing, this sweet t-shirt in the background, or the super cool one that I'm wearing right now. It says conquer everything. Man, check that graphic out. It's sweet. If you want to see it, go over to CodyDiener.com at Cody Diener Podcast. Or even better, go directly to Rest When Dead Clothing. Check them out on Instagram at Rest When Dead Clothing. And go to restwhendead.ca and see their entire collection. Guys, they got t-shirts. It's like that super soft cotton that is like, oh, man, it's like giving you a nice warm hug. You need some new workout gear. They got like rim tank tops on there. You got to check them out. Or they got stringers. Those are those tank tops that are like super thin on the top. It looks like you cut them because you want to look jacked and show off your muscles, but they're not. These are like high quality like stringer tanks that are perfect for working out. And they got hats just like the one that I'm wearing right here. Rest when dead clothing. Check them out. Rest when dead dot CA and. Thank you, Rest When Dead. You guys are awesome. Everyone at Rest When Dead, they're focused. They're determined. They have this never say die attitude, hence Rest When Dead. And they're all about giving back to the economy and supporting local. And that's what I am all about. And that's why I want to partner with these guys. So check them out, restwhendead.ca. And talk about checking out. Let's check out today's guest. 
You're back for part two with David Zahadi. You learned last week that if you weren't sure who David Zahadi was because you've never seen him wrestle before, you learned that's because he's not a wrestler. This guy's a wrestling guru behind the scenes. He came up with the Monday Night Raw intro with the explosions and Stone Cold Steve Austin. This guy shot Super Bowl commercials. Remember those Super Bowl commercials that really made WWF blow up back in the day during the Attitude Era? David Zahadi was involved in those voiceovers of Classy Freddy Blassie and those packages. Some of your favorite WrestleMania packages that led up to the biggest WrestleManias of all time back in the Attitude Era. Guess who filmed those, created those, wrote those, came up with the entire concept? We're talking David Zahadi. And now he's using all of those skills and bringing amazing direction and creative production to impact wrestling that I'm a proud wrestler on. That's where I met David. I met him at Impact Wrestling. We struck up a friendship right away because this guy is nothing but positive, nothing but wanting to put positive vibes out into the world and taking life lessons that he's learned in his journey and spreading that love and those life lessons with everybody else this guy does that on a daily basis go check him out at sahadi3 on instagram s-a-h-a-d-i-3 and you'll see he's got some really cool like he calls it bar wisdom his stories are like these little snippets that just something you'll read and it'll make your day also you hear us talking about in these two parts in this these conversations from last week and this week David Sahadi had a very famous, legendary father named Lou, Lou Sahadi, just a prolific writer who wrote so many sports articles and books and was an amazing man. He was David's best friend. And David has now written a book. You hear us talking about it. And I just want to put it over here on the, uh, on the intro. It's called My Dad, My Dying Son son s-u-n and it's a very interesting concept where david has eat every other chapter is his uh, chapter that his father wrote and then he follows it up with a chapter that he's written about his dad and what his father meant to him and all the life lessons that were taught to him from his dad and these different situations that he's been through both in his career and in his life Man, I've got a chance to read some of these chapters because my friend David has shared them with me. And I highly, highly, highly recommend when it is available, you purchase My Dad, My Dying Son by David Zahadi. You can learn all about the release of that book, how you can get yourself a copy by following David on Instagram at Sahadi3, S-A-H-A-D-I-3. So. We left off last week in the middle of a very enlightening and inspiring conversation. Let's continue that conversation now for Wrestling His Life is Wrestling with Cody Diener and my friend, David Sahadi. So these guys are influenced by you because of your creativity and your creative process, which is something I'm really fascinated about because everybody has a different creative process, whether it's a wrestler just getting ready for their match yeah. or, a pro or a producer that's helping, you know, uh, a couple of wrestlers put together a match mm -hmm. or someone who's got to write a, a pre-tape or whatever it may be. What's your creative process? Is it always the same? Is it different? Like, uh, it's different, process? but there's one common thread. Um, I am completely sober right now, Cody. Yeah, I've been sober for a while. I'm proud. I've been sober for 24 hours. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I have a couple of drinks tonight. And for yeah. some reason, Cody, it's like if I was to write a script right now, it'd be good. Okay. But it would just be good. And yeah. sometimes I'll write one, you know, during the day and then go out and have a couple of drinks and come back and go, oh, my God, now I can really polish this up. There's something mm -hmm. about the inhibitions being lowered. Whether it's through like a little bit of alcohol or through a little microdose of some, um, yeah, some, I don't know how to describe it, some earth plant or whatever. Sure, microdose yeah. a little bit, and it just yeah. opens up portals to my mind, and it is then that I get these ideas. Let's go back to the Freddie Blassie spot, the legend. Okay. I was yeah. out with friends, and I left them, and I had a, a very good buzz going, and it was about two o'clock in the morning, and I was watching TV, getting ready to go to bed, and I saw. 
a commercial with an old man with white hair. And I swear to you, I wrote that spot in five minutes. I saw wow. that guy with the white hair. I thought of Freddie Blassie. He and I were close by back then. And I just wrote that spot down. Mm -hmm. So maybe the under the influence triggered me tying together an old man with gray hair to Freddie Blassie, but I got on my computer. And, and of course, I finesse it the next day, but there's, the essence of it was pretty much there in just yeah. five minutes. If I try yeah. to force something, Cody, it doesn't come. And you being in creative, um, you know how it is. If it's not yep. coming, you don't force it. You walk away. If it is mm -hmm. coming, you don't walk away. You stop. There were some mm. guys working on my dad's book. It's done, Cody. Uh, it's getting ready to get sent to the publisher. We're proofreading it. But I just yeah. added another power, another three paragraphs last night because a thought came to me. Oh, cool. And when I was writing it, it's like I would sometimes start at 11 o'clock at night and I would go through five drinks. I wouldn't drink all five, Cody, but I'm so engrossed in writing that mm. an hour later, my drink is nothing but melted whatever. Mm. So I yeah. pull it out and make another <laughs> Yeah, I'm worse in, in the writing, and next thing you know, it's like four o'clock in the morning, or five o'clock in the morning. But when I had those moments of writing this book, and I wrote it in six weeks, I've been polishing it ever since. It's just like you don't turn it off. I don't care if I'm going to be awake until the sunrise. If I'm sitting there and words are coming out and pages are are adding up, I'm going to keep on going there. And if it's not there, I'll just turn it off and go to bed. That's so I think that's really cool. That, that it, it brings to mind. In my creative process with whatever it is whether it's i'm writing something or i'm also a musician so i write music and i've that's awesome and you saying that the freddie blassie thing came to you you know when you wrote it in five minutes any song that i've ever written that's even remotely good and i will say and the best songs i've ever written i wrote in five minutes because wow. it just it just came to me and it's like yep you yeah. get it down yeah. if i sit down i'm like okay i'm gonna write a song like if it doesn't come to me and there's not this inspiration, if there's yeah. not this spark or mm -hmm. whatever it is, I can't force it. I'm yeah. very, I'm very yeah. similar with whatever it is, whatever it is create creatively with, with the wrestling. Like what happens is I'll, I'll be on my way to a show. This happens to be all the time. So I'll have a, even a big pay-per-view match. Right. And I'm thinking, man, I can't wait till this, th this match. So I got me and me and Eric young. We're going to have this no DQ match. It's going to be on pay-per-view. It's I'm, I'm so excited about it. And I'm coming up with ideas for it. And it's just like blank blank. And I'm like, man, I got to come up with something blank. I got nothing. Sit down, you know, with EY, he says one thing, one thing. And it just sparks and goes boom. And then it's like, da -da 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 -da. and you can just, it just starts with the haystack. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's just that, that spark with when, when once it's there, you ride it. Like yeah. you, you, you ride it. Cody, here's another thing. Um, and I think you'd feel the same way too, since you're a songwriter, but I need to have emotion connected to it too. Like I write my best stuff and I'm either extremely elated and happy or when I'm sad and depressed yeah. or hurt about something. That's when my, my best writing comes out in moments of emotion. If I'm just blah, then whatever I try to write is gonna be just blah. But like writing my dad's book, uh, you know, there's emotion, of course, of my dad and the loss and the sadness and the heartache, but there's also great catharsis because every chapter alternates between one of my chapters taking care of him when he came home from the hospital to a fl flashback of one of his books, you know, condensed to eight or 10 pages. When I was writing my dad's chapters, I'm like, it felt as if his hands were guiding mine. And it brought me so joy because I'm feeling the moment that he's describing and imagining him being there. And I never realized what a great writer my father was until I started this book and I had to read his books. Yeah. And he was a tremendous, tremendous writer. A uh, slight different style than mine, but he was very good with words too. He can paint an entire picture so well. Yes. And I want to, I want to say right now to my listeners, like, yeah, I've been, I was honored for you to have sent me some, some excerpts of your, of your book that you're writing. And as you said, it's going to be out in two weeks. And, two, it all depends. Two, Five days after I sent it to the publisher, but I just, you know, keep on tweaking it. And I just want to yeah. uh, uh, proofread it. I proofread the first half, so did a friend. And you find so many typos that you don't catch, like instead sure. of of, it's or. So it's O, sure. or, O, A. Yeah. Just a little yeah. bit like that. Sure, so sure. Because I missed some things that she found and she found and she missed some things that I found. So right. we're just in that process right now. But what's the title of your what's what title of your book? Just so everybody dad, can go 
my dad, my dying son. Mm -hmm. And the okay. re son is spelled with the U because my dad was the son of my life. He was my light, my guide, my inspiration. So it's spelled that way purposely. And I sent you a text last night, Cody, of mm -hmm. the three paragraphs that I wrote. Yep, I got and it. And the last chapter about the passing, it just seems so like, you know, like, you know, he, he left his body on this day. And then I described, like I said, goodbye. And so I take care of his children now. And, and then I start talking about like the, the plaudits I came in. But I really wanted to write down how I felt because I never wanted to walk into that room, you know, and like emotions that were going through me. And those three paragraphs that I added last night that were very descriptive, I think really made that chapter exponentially better. And again, that came to me last night in a moment of, you know, it was about midnight. I was a, a few drinks in, but, you know, I never get crazy, uh, Cody, as far as drunk. I just get like a nice little happy buzz. Um, yeah. I think know. there's a, I think there's a lesson in there, Sahadi, yeah. like, because you keep talking about, f you want to make sure that you're feeling something. Yeah. And I know for me, when I'm, when I'm putting a match together yeah. or writing a song, my focus is how is the audience going to feel? Mm -hmm. And there's a very famous quote, you know, um, that says, people aren't going to remember what you say or remember what you do, but they will always remember how you make them feel. Yeah. You know, if you want to really make an impact and an influence, which we've talked about, you want to make people feel something. Yeah. You know, well, I don't really know how I felt, Cody, uh, with what I sent you last night, because I told my dad I was never going to see his body when he's dead. because just, you know, it's mm -hmm. just a corpse, it's just a cadaver. Mm -hmm. I thought to my sister and I spent the night my dad was dying. We didn't know if he had a day or five days, but it came suddenly. It came, you know, that night hospice came over and said, he's going to crisis care right now. And I slept with him and he mumbled because he couldn't speak because his voice, his throat muscles were paralyzed. And he mumbled, he mumbled, I held his hand and. It was beautiful and sad. And then at seven o'clock, the nurse came with the morphine and would leave me and I took a little nap. And then he passed when I, when I was uh, napping. And then my sister, I mean, when I was out you know, doing an errand and she wanted me to see the, the image of him there and say goodbye. And I said, no, Liz, I said goodbye last night. And this was not in the book until I put it in there last night. Mm. But I obliged her because she wanted me to. And Cody, for the last two weeks leading up to me breaking down and crying the night really hard, every image of my father, was just of that lifeless corpse in the bed and it wasn't my father. And that's all that would come to my mind whenever I would think about my dad. So yeah. I changed a, a a nature screen grab on the phone of what of my dad was younger and healthier. And now that image no longer haunts me, but it was haunting me for about two weeks. Yeah. It really I, wasn't all I would see that one image. And it was a it, it was a, a frame, what we call in 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 TV world one th one thirtieth of a second. And I just did yep. that just to peek in, but in that one still I saw everything, you know, it was just something I never wanted to see because that wasn't him. Uh, I can one hundred percent relate to that, brother. My my father passed away a year ago and when I went to the to the funeral home, they had they had him in the back, um, and we were going to get him cremated. And it was just me alone. I have I have three other siblings that they were working, and I was the only one I was available. And I was the exeter or the um, the executor of the estate, so I was dealing with all these things. Like do, they asked me, you know, do you want to see his body before we before we cremate him? And like you, I was like, ha, ah, I don't think I do. Like, and like, I don't, I don't want that to be the final, the final image, you know? And oh, I, I went into the room because the, the guy said like, like it's, a lot of people need this for closure. And I'm like, well, none of, none of my other siblings were there. No one had seen him in his family had seen, seen it. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I just felt like I got to do it. So I, I did it, yeah. but I went in there with a prayer, Sahadi, that I was like, please, you know, don't let this image I'm about to see mm -hmm. be my lasting memory. And the prayer, the prayer worked. Good. It definitely yeah. works, Sahadi. But, but there, it, that moment yeah. I was, it was very, very emotional. And I, I still, re I still remember the how it looked. I remember the smell. I remember yeah. exactly the room. I remember all about it. Like that frame, yeah. it's there. That yeah. frame's in my mind. Yeah. I know I haven't forgot about it. It's a frame, but it's not the frame 
you know, that's going to be the closing credits and it's going to stay, stay on the screen forever. It's just, it was just a frame. Yeah. And again, the frame, Cody, only got stuck in my mind the last two weeks because of leading up to the football season, I knew it was going to be emotional. Ah, right. Um, Yeah. Like, like that frame wasn't there for like five months, but for the last two weeks up until a couple of nights ago, that was Mm -hmm. all that would pop in my head. And I think about my dad every 10, 15 minutes of, of every single day. So that was all and just because I knew I couldn't call my father and talk about the Jets and talk to him about Aaron Rodgers and all that kind of stuff. So I knew it was coming. I didn't know that the deep state of depression would hit so hard. Yeah. And it hit as hard as it ever did. Same thing with my sisters, especially my younger one, because uh, a week ago, a week and a half ago, when college football season began, my dad would always call her and say, how are my boys doing? You know, his grandchildren. And she knew there'd be no phone coming call coming that day. So she had her two weeks prior to that weekend. My, my two weeks started a week after hers and just ended a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've talked to you a lot about, about, about your dad and I, I love that we can talk about your dad with, and, and people know those that don't know about Lou Sahadi, just go Google him right now. And he was an amazing writer and I know he was important to you because he was there at, it's, it seems to me that he was there with you through everything, through all your through your career and and all your major milestones, I guess, in your various careers and different jobs. Yeah. Like, what did your? I'm curious. What? How did your dad feel about you working with the WWE during that Attitude Era? Was he supportive? Did he? No, he was. Oh. He, no, he was very skeptical at first. Okay. But once he saw what we were doing and how we were growing, he loved it actually, and he was very uh, proud of me for doing that. Oh, okay. And, you know, he would meet guys like The Rock, you know, and friend them. Because so whenever we did shoots down in Miami, you know, my dad wouldn't come along and be there with me. Um, I don't mean to sound egotistical, and I hope I don't come across this way, but my dad wrote Willie Mays' autobiography. And there was a moment Willie says when he's playing with his father in the Negro Leagues when the son actually became better than the father as the father was aging. Um, my dad was a legend in the world of sports for 30 years. And slowly over time, when the attitude era happened in the early 2000s, it was I who now was like the legend. I had kind of like suppressed my father, but there was not a bit of envy at all in, in the middle. There's nothing but love and, and joy and so much pride that he had in his son, Cody. Uh, and he was so happy for me. I mean, that's just, that's the kind of person that he was. Yes. My son is doing so well right now. He's more famous than I am at this stage in my career. And he took great joy in that. Yeah. And yeah. So it, you're right. Where I get that from about nurturing people, I mean, it's <laughs> obviously from my father. Yeah. So is he someone that you went to for advice when you needed always, it? Oh, I always went to advice, Cody. And okay. before, so, yeah, go ahead. So I was going to say, like, when you decided, I got, I'm just thinking of some of your major moments, like, I'm assuming a big moment was deciding to leave the WWE, you yeah. know, this, this job that you said yeah. where you had reached this legendary status. Did you go to him for advice on that to make that decision? I like is a break and he was a big concern thinking that I'll lose my career. I said, no, pop, I won't. I, I trust in the universe. I trust in this. Mm. And I won't. So he was slightly concerned, but he was happy when I joined TNA. Yeah. And then when I joined TNA, it was only for a three month thing because WE was trying to get me back there. But um, I said, let me ease and graduate, let me work part time and turn full time. And by part time, I didn't mean two weeks on, two weeks off. I said, let me work on a project for three months and then take like, you know, two weeks off. Or let me do something for an extended time and take, you know, another two weeks off and slowly ease in. And I said, no, it's full time or no time. So uh, Jeff Jarrett off me part time. And it was only for three months to help launch Victory Road in 2004, the first time they went to the monthly pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. And we did a little stunt just for PR only, not to hurt from WWE, but it was called Cookies and Balloons. The famous I wanted movie. to ask you about that. I read about that. That was you, right? I, yeah. I saw your, your sheet of questions down there because I'm a psychic and I can see. <laughs> you that. are. It's like a, the, you're, you're hitting all these things. That I don't even have to. Me. It's amazing. I don't even have to. It's, yeah. Goed by this this by, this thing I got here. It's like you're hitting them all, man. Yes. But it, it was just a hype package is supposed to be it was like wow in this one weekend we launched our first ever three hour pay-per-view hello my name is eden and i'm gonna enter through um you know a song right now so listen along and i would do it a b c d e f g 
H I J K L M N O P Q O S T U N V. Next. W W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Twenty six letters to A to Z. Oh wow! How many letters are in the alphabet, Eden? Twenty six. I'm here with Eden and Hallie. Oh yes, both of my youngest daughters. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And it's interesting that you are mentioning the alphabet because I want to tell my audience about ultimate sport training that has initials that go at the beginning before ultimate sport uh, training. I didn't talk about that yet, but People I'll, just, I'll just listen along and see. Okay, you're gonna, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't told you guys anything about this. You have no idea what we're about to talk about. Yeah, but no Hallie idea. can help me. She can read those three letters that are on the page. What are those three letters? M G D. Close. M J D. Yes, M J D. Because we are going to promote M J D Ultimate Sport Training at M J D Ultimate Sport dot com. Eden, can you say M J D? M J D. Good. M J D Ultimate Sport dot com. It's a personal training. Oh. It, oh. Okay. M. M- D M J M J D and Ultimate 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 dot com. Okay, you're good at the dot com stuff. We've established that like, in previous episodes. Um, so can I say? Net Pro Studios. Yes, but we gotta st- we gotta stay on track. This yeah. is MJD Ultimate Sport Training. Yeah. So sorry about that. That will be cut out. So I'm not gonna cut that out. I'm leaving it in. Oh, okay. So <laughs> well, did you want to say something, I- Hallie? <laughs> yep. MJD Ultimate Sport dot com. Okay. Let me tell you what it is. You guys listen to me for a second, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. okay. It's a personal training and guidance with customized oh, programs. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay, but it's customized. I don't really get it, but (laughs) but you have to listen. I said, remember, I said, listen, don't don't cut me off. Okay. Okay, okay, you got to be quiet. Play the game where you try to be (laughs) quiet. Okay, ready? Now just listen. Personal training and guidance with customized programs focused on your needs, goals, and preferences, and an emphasis on a sensible, holistic journey to physical and mental well-being. That's a lot of big words. Yep. But the owner of MJD Ultimate Sport Training is my buddy, Matt DeRosa. His name is Matt. And you know when I go out and do exercises in the garage? Mm-hmm. You know when I do that? Yeah. And I'm doing exercise with all those weights and uh-huh. lifting them up? Yep, yep, yep. Do you know... Who told me what exercises to do? He gave me a very personalized program just for me, special, just for me, me and nobody else. Oh, Hallie's raising her hand. Can you guess who told me what exercises to do? Matt. Matt did. And you know what his business is called? Um, NJDUltimateSport.com. Yes. And now Eden is raising her hand. It's like we've, we've turned this into like a little lesson. Okay. What would you like so, to say, Eden? Since I don't know that. A dog thing, you know. Okay. Since I don't know it, I'm yeah. just going to say that I really like doing these things. And one day when I was doing this with my dad, um, Cody Didoy, which is him, I was in charge. So when I grow up, I am going to be a wrestler and... Oh, my goodness. And what else? This is the first I've been I've heard of this. This is breaking news on the Wrestling is Life is Wrestling podcast. What else are you going to be? A wrestler and what? A wrestler and... I have an idea. Wrestler okay. and literally maybe um, put up a dance with me on the stage. Oh, you're going to dance on a stage? Well, you could get in really good shape to do those dances by going to... MJD Ultimate 
Sport.com. Yes, they do one-on-one attention and tailored programs. They have a boutique fitness studio. They have youth programs, nutritional counseling. But, but, they have youth but, but, programs. But, 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 That's for but, but, kids but. like you. Shh. But like older than you. Oh, you're shushing me? Sorry, you're the boss, Eden. I had to say that. Okay, you say one thing. But then if I'm doing a whole thing with people, and then it would be too much work for them to have, like, you know... Too much work for them for a lot of people to come, and I would have to kick up that whole stadium to be a huge stadi- stage and the wrestling thing like set up. I don't know anything you're talking about right now. You just like to hear your own voice in the microphone, don't and you? And the wrestlers are going to wrestle. Wrestlers and stuff. Well, let's talk We're about MJT <laughs> Ultimate Sport but Training. With <laughs> oh. But then Hallie's got her I hand up, but po- Eden's just taking I control. This, okay. Um, the wrestlers are gonna be wrestling on the you know wrestling thing. So, but I do that, they're gonna wrestle, and people will turn around them chairs and watch. Okay, e- Hallie has something to say before we have to go. Well, Eden, yes. you don't have to be old. You don't I have don't. to be big to dance on a stage. I, I could have danced on a stage like last year. But then how do I get on the stage? You just need to go to dance class. Dance class? And then you could eventually go on the stage. But we're okay. going to talk We're going to talk about MJD Ultimate Sport Training. Oh, dot com. Yes. Okay. Com. It doesn't matter. Okay. Not just training. let's go on with it. No, okay, that was yeah. perfect. You guys just yeah. had a very good, important conversation. <laughs> and it all know. makes sense because I did know that you could dance Shh. and become a really good Shh. fit Shh. dancer Shh. by getting fit through my friend Matt. Okay. What are you shushing me for? I'm shushing you because you're not the one here at charge. <laughs> I am. I think all my listeners have figured that out already, that so I'm definitely not in charge. Okay, but we can, we can do another one. So we've got to gotta finish this one. We have okay, to make sure fine. that we tell them about this one more time and like where they got to go on the internet <laughs> to find out about more of these it, awesome things. Oh, you guys can help me with numbers. Um, um, you guys can help me because you can call Matt and get a consultation, a free consultation. My listeners love free because I give them this episode for free every week. Wait, so can, can you read something? the? Hallie's going to read this phone number and then you can repeat it after her, okay? okay? So do do the th- those numbers first and then Eden, you repeat. 647-647-9. Eight six four four. Perfect. Six four seven nine eight seven eight six four four, and that is mjdultimatesport.com. Excuse me. What is what is that, Hallie? What's the website again? Um, mjdultimatesport.com. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Can you can you say bye to my listeners, Hallie? Bye. Um, Eden, can you say bye to my listeners? But just a second, I'm just saying that these letters are too small for me to look at. Okay, we'll have to make I the pro- point bigger I, I, then next but time. If, if it's like this, then I probably need my glasses. Okay, so you just got to say bye now, Eden. Bye. Hulk Hogan was backstage, and Macho Man Randy Savage was backstage, and a day later, WWE was in there to film a commercial. So um, Universal Studios has become the epicenter of pro wrestling, and that's all that was for. Mm. And it offended them so much that uh, they tried to close me down from shooting. I said, we're on public ground. We're allowed to. We didn't get anything good, but uh, I heard, and this really, all this angers me, to this day, Cody. Mm-hmm. But my dad worked for Vince Sr. Mm-hmm. He worked for Vince Jr. getting PR for when Mike Tyson was there, for when Lawrence Taylor was there, getting sports cars to come to these events, doing the hype for it. So he worked for Vince McMahon Jr. too, and he was getting a Legends contract, which was $3,000 a month. And those contracts go, as you know, in, in perpetuity. Yeah. And I told my dad what I did about the cookies and balloons thing, and he said, oh, I hope they're not going to take my paycheck away. And I said, I don't think they'll do that. That would be cold and heartless. And the next day, his paycheck came in, 
And he's a very religious man, very Catholic. So I saw him quietly go in the living room beyond my vision, but I wanted, I wanted to peek and see what he was doing. And he was kissing the thing and, and, and crossing, you know, kissing the chick and crossing. Okay. And then two day, uh, a few days later, Kevin Dunn called and said, Lou, you're a good person. I hate to give people bad news, but um, we are, are tightening up our budgets and um, there's no more Legends checks that are going to come. And one you got last week is your last. And I found out through somebody who's in that meeting, who will go nameless, because I don't want to get sued or anything, but that they said, how do we get back at David Sahadi? And somebody said, hit him where it hurts the most. Oh, Let's man. take that check away from his father. And damn it, Cody, that angers me to this day because he's that. I mean, that's thirty-six thousand dollars a year that a man who's semi-retired could have used. And that the good thing is that that inspired me. I called Jim out the next day and said, "Guess what? I'm coming back full time if you still want me." Because of course I do, and I said, "Good." So that mm. got me back to you know. Uh, okay. Yep. Time. But yeah. I mean, just to do that to my father and, and lie to him about that just. Some things you can forgive and you can forget. Um, that might be something that I can do neither. Yeah. No, no, no. That that's just holding on to anger. It's just I'll never forget it, and, and I forgive them for doing it because that is people that are shallow and people that don't have hearts uh, as you and I do. Uh, so I, I do forgive them for that. But it's just that really, really hurt at that time. I remember so much of how that hurt. Yeah, I, dude, I, I can't imagine. So I have something that I'm in, I I wanted to talk to you about. It's related to all this sure. Ma of, in terms of like making decisions and, and getting, you know, this decision to go with TNA. And you just said a, a huge reason for that was, was the story you just told. And that makes sense. But and maybe I'm wrong in my research, but I, I read that between your time with the WWE Mm -hmm. and signing with tna that you took some time off and you you did some hiking and you wrote a novel is this true cody i had about uh 180 000 saved up my bank account right <laughs> okay okay well, that that will last me at least two years and i knew that i had a house that i could sell that would, would get me some money in equity so i was just you know i decided i want to travel across country and never did my car i did not once but twice and <gasps> It was one of the greatest moments of my life. There are many yeah. greatest moments of my life, including now. Um, but it was just like I would go to visit these national parks. Yeah, I'd go to a small town. If I liked it, I'd stay for two or three nights. If I didn't like it, I'd leave the very next day. And I met so many fascinating people and so many spirit teachers. I like to call them people that are wise, you know, whatever. And man, it took me three months just to get to California. Mm. And here's my epiphany in life. Um, and this is in the, it's it's in the book uh, Last Call of Gods that I wrote during this time. Okay. Uh, I'm in the town is Land of Wyoming. It's in the middle of nowhere. And the bartender, uh, as a joke to everybody, every stranger goes, "What brings you to Lander, or did just get in the way?" And I said, <laughs> "Very funny. Um, I wanted to come here purposely to check it out." But I'm being this is this is when I had my ego back then, Cody. Right. Okay. Um, I was humble. I'm like, yeah, I quit my job. I'm going to California, then Hawaii, then I can drop back, whatever. I want to buy a little shot. I bought a couple of shots, you know, for like people that were there. Yeah. Then I had this Native American Indian, you know, was sitting there in the corner watching the whole time. And he goes, and I go there and Tim, and he goes, David, so you traveled far, right? And the, the ego me is like, yeah, 2,000 miles. Can you believe it? And more to come. And he goes, David, the longest journey you'll ever make in life is from here. To here. And that was my like, whoa. That's when I started trusting in my heart and not my head because this will mess you up. This will make you think, well, the heart, it's on the other side of your video. Um, yeah. But the heart is never wrong. Always listen to your heart. Yeah. If something doesn't feel right, Cody, now I'm getting off the subject of, the, of, this, of that uh, journal. I'm just giving a life lesson. But if something doesn't feel right, that means it's not. That's your yeah. heart. Mm -hmm. By the same token, uh, enthusiasm is the voice of the heart. So wherever your heart, wherever your your heart is, so too is your treasure. And it's oh. that stupid. it's hard people to trust this. And when I quit WWE, I trusted this. This told me don't do that. I'm walking away from a lot of money. I don't know what's going right, to happen. Right, right. This said, go, go. You need to go. And why I need to go was I needed to learn. I need to learn things bigger. Than you know the ordinary world, we need to learn things about 
life, the spirit, and the universe beyond. Mm-hmm. And that, and so you were able to f- find those lessons kind of on that Gosh, yeah, the, spiritual yeah. journey in that of that in between time. Cody, I was always very spiritual, and I have certain talents and certain gifts. Um, one is I'm clairsentient, which means I can sense things. A clairvoyant person can see things. My mom is clairvoyant; she can see ghosts or whatever. I'm clairsentient. I can sense things. I can okay. know when it's time to go, when it's time to stay, when something's not right, not wrong. I can tell the minute that I see somebody in a restaurant or a bar whether energy is good or bad. Right. And that moment, what is really turned on all my senses, opened up all my chakras, and really had my spiritual side just take off like a rocket. Mm-hmm. That moment with that uh, Indian chief there in that bar. Wow. Wow. Well, I'm just turning to Cody, right? I'm going to do it on the other side just so it looks better. Yeah. <laughs> We're there. That's so there. good, man. I love that. That's, that's, oh, man. This is exactly why I, I wanted you on here, Sahadi. This, this is what I'm this podcast is about, man. It's I'm not like you know, you're not letting me down. This is life lessons, man. That's what this is about, you know. Um, I don't think a lot of people expect to. I think another thing about talk about breaking down barriers and stereotypes. I said you're kind of like one of those guys that did that, being a you know a New Yorker that grew up in the '60s in New York, and you're your spiritual, helpful guy. Yeah. I don't. I don't think people expect this kind of. I, I guess life lessons and conversations out of people that are, you know, oh, these a product, a, a direct, a creative director and a producer get together and have a chat. What what are they going to talk about? You know, how to film film a body slam properly? <laughs> like, nah, uh, uh-uh. no, man. This this kind of stuff. This is this is what I live for, man. This is what I like. And Cody, on that um, note, on that note, like whenever I go out of town, um, people, most people don't know what I do for a living. Right, yeah. Um, until they come really close to me. Because I want them to like me for the person that I am, not the job that I have. Um, mm-hmm. So I just don't tell people. A lot of people think I'm this, this biker, you know, wearing bands and, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, just, you know, talks a lot and like, you know, he talks everybody inside the inside the restaurant and the bar and, and stuff. So yeah. I want people to know who I am before I let them, them know what I do for a living. Yeah, that's interesting. Again, remember, directing is uh, my second job, not my first for- Right. Yes. So uh, I want to, I want to, this is, I want to talk about this and this, this does actually connect to everything we're talking about. Cause I like to keep the flow going, but you wrote articles for TNA wrestling.com. I had you do some, write, write some articles, right? Um, yeah, my, my choice to do that. I wanted that to. was your choice. Did you come yeah. to them and say, I would like to start writing some things? The spirit of wrestling, because I was influenced by all these spiritual people and then on my journey. So I wanted to okay. see a different side of wrestling where it was like, you know, the person that AJ Styles is, you know, the guy that's not the athlete, you know, the, the something about Eric Young and his voice losing and some ride that he did. But like the human aspect of the stars, not the wrestling aspect of them. And the last one I wrote uh, was on uh, Jeff Jarrett's wife when she passed. Yeah, and I read that. that yeah. was my best one, and it was painful to see Jeff read it and cry. And I don't know why I stopped writing, but maybe that's the reason why. Mm. That was the last one I did. Yeah, i I read a few of them mm-hmm. in my research. You're the most. You're. Tell I me. Also what want, I also want. I also want. I also want. <laughs> what, what do I Google? Okay, so I I read more. I did more research on David Zahadi than I've done for any of my other guests. So I feel honored. I You didn't just get like a two minute, like, Wait, maybe something I should do for impact once a month to put on that website. Dude, you... com- this is, I want to read a quote from one of your, I'm going to read a quote from one of your articles. Please, that... please stop. Okay. So this is the one you, you made reference to um, the AJ. Yeah. Uh, writing about AJ. And um, you were, you were talking in this article about what s- seems like maybe just a simple moment of aj just giving him his time to this to this young person that had some physical and mental disabilities and he was he was just just kind to the kid and you you talk about how special that moment was of uh and and getting to witness that and i think it's so interesting now i have the perspective of i'm just picturing you know a david sahadi that's went on this kind of spiritual quest for many years and got yeah. all this knowledge and then now you're back in this wrestling business and you're 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 and it also connected to you saying how you're um 
what, what would you what was the word you said it wasn't clear was it clairvoyant or what is it the uh they're sentient clear sentient okay so you get you sense the power so i'm just i'm just seeing all your senses firing in this moment I, I, as you're I, watching this I have, I have a great sense of empathy as well like I yeah anybody in whatever they're going through when they when they tell me what's happening in their lives and you wrote after seeing seeing this and getting having those senses go and seeing this moment with aj and this young young fan you said um we give little when we give our possessions. We give greatly when we give of ourselves. Yes. I think that's so I think that's so beautiful. And it go it speaks to what you said right off the hop about yourself. You know, your 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 job description of yourself is oh I'm a I'm a I'm a healer, you know, and I'm a helper. I want to help people. You know, you know, and you realize that that's what's important. Yeah, is gi and of giving of yourself. And well, look at that kid, Cody. Would you rather have had some somebody give him a hundred dollars, or, or to meet mm. one of his idols, AJ Styles? Right. Like, what is AJ Styles giving of himself, his time, and talking to him, listening to the kid, and playing with the kid? I mean, that's that's invaluable, dude. You know? I just. I just put up on my social media today. It's something that you'll you'll think is so cool. So this this is young girl. Her name is Layla, mm -hmm. and when she was a young girl back in 2016, she saw me at a wrestling show. She had a Cody Diener shirt, but it was too big for her, so she she made it into a little dress. And I have this wonderful picture of us, you know, uh, this moment of her showing me her dress, and then I signed her little "I Love Cody Diener" poster that she had made, and I signed it, you know, to Layla Cody Diener. This past weekend, Sahadi, I'm I'm working a merch table, selling some T-shirts, and you know this beautiful teenage girl comes up to me with a big smile on her face, and she holds up a sign that says "I love Cody Diener," or and it says "To Layla" with my signature on it, and it was Layla. Se seven years later, still had this poster wow. that I had signed. And we had a big hug. I took a picture. So I have like a side by side on my my Instagram right now that shows this picture of of Layla with her sign. I check you Instagram know, almost the, every single day, by the way, just so you yeah. Know. Okay, yeah. so you'll you'll see it later today because um, our phones are listening to us. So now it's going to pop up now as soon as you go. It'll, it'll show you about that that one. But it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I said, what I what I what I put in my caption was, you know, advice to young wrestlers is, hey. Don't ever overlook, you know, actually, I should read exactly what I said. Um, Please. If you don't mind, because I know you're you're very like minded with me in terms of this. And it speaks to what you're to what you said. I said, um, dear young wrestlers, never underestimate how much a small act of kindness like an autograph for a young kid might mean to someone, you know, and then there's this picture of me thinking this meaning potentially i don't think it's super meaningful i sign lots of autographs so i sign this kid's poster mm -hmm. you know i do that all the time you know and seven years later that kid still has that poster wow. and i and i have no idea until i get to have this conversation with her really how much that how much that meant to her and what she appreciated wasn't me giving her a hundred dollars mm -hmm. or any possession. Mm -hmm. It's not even the poster that's meaningful to her. Cause I talked to her dad as well. Yeah. It's that time that I spent with her signing it yeah. and giving her my attention, just giving of myself of a couple minutes, which isn't hard to do. Cody, I but, see your Instagram doing that all the time with kids. And I love that. Do you work hard? Are you a focused, determined, never say die type of person? Well, you need the right clothes to match that mindset. You need to check out Rest When Dead Clothing. I want to tell you about Rest When Dead Clothing, but I don't want to do it alone. I want to do it with my son, whose name is? Abel. And he is how many years old? Nine. Nine. Abel's going to help me tell you more about Rest When Dead that is a fitness and lifestyle apparel for the ones who never quit. They're a cutting edge fitness apparel company that embodies the spirit of hard work and determination. With a strong focus on cool designs, high quality materials, and exceptional fit, 
Rest when dedicators to individuals leading a d- demanding and active lifestyle. At Rest When Dead, they understand that those who embrace a rigorous daily routine require workout and lifestyle attire that reflects their unique personality. That's why their design team works tirelessly to create innovative and stylish designs that make a bold statement, setting you apart from the crowd. Rest When Dead is more than just a fitness apparel brand. It's a lifestyle. They create... Celebrate the hardworking individuals who strive for greatness in all aspects of their lives. Their clothing is a symbol of dedication, perseverance, and the pursuit of excellence. So whether you're hitting the gym, going for a run, or simply embracing your hardworking lifestyle, Rest When Dead is here to provide you with the highest quality, stylish, and comfortable apparel that embodies this essence. It's time to tell the world you will Rest When Dead. Rest When Dead is a wicked, awesome Canadian company that ships worldwide. Follow them on Instagram at Rest When Dead Clothing and check out their website at restwhendead.ca. That's restwhendead.ca. Because my, my follow up question to that quote was, you know, do you still believe this? You know, that giving of yourself is more important than possessions. And I think that, I think the answer is obvious, yeah. right? I, yeah. I got to before Cardi signed his deep. Um, but, um, it's so it takes energy to be mean. My dad always told me, right? Okay. And yeah. I say uh, uh, it takes a lot of energy to be mean, but kindness is kindness is free. So sprinkle that shit everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, man. I love it. Oh, that's so good. So we were, you're dropping lots of good advice. Mm-hmm. We're, t- we're both doing that. And you do it all the time. You do it with me. You're doing it right now with our audience. Thank you. I want to ask you a very specific um, question because sure. I get asked all the time, Sahadi, from young wannabe wrestlers, mm-hmm. you know, how do I get into the wrestling business? And I, I talked to them about wrestling school and all this stuff. But I also get a lot of people that come up to me that say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to wrestle because mm-hmm. I'm too, I'm too small. And I don't actually really want to do, I'm not drawn to the, to that, but I am really drawn to the creative process and writing and production. Like, how do I get into it? And I don't know how to answer that properly. I have some ideas, but I don't really know how to answer that as well as I know how to answer here's how you become a professional wrestler so like what advice would you give a young person that wants to get into the wrestling business and and work behind the scenes in a you, creative and production you do what Kevin Martin uh did it uh at, at impact you get in there as a PA you get in there at a very low entry level job okay and you work your butt off and you'll ascend but you have to get your foot in the door. It normally takes a contact to get your foot in the door, knowing somebody. Mm. Um, I would like to say for somebody to send me, you know, their their uh, uh, you know their info or their resume right now. But we don't have any positions open. We're all completely filled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I would not dare have anybody do an internship for free. I I don't believe that. I don't think it's right. Not unless there's a promise that if they do well they will get a job in six months but i don't believe in in free internships with no guarantee of anything okay so i i'm glad that i'm i love that like you're just saying get yourself get your foot in the door like i did a lower level yeah one day a week on nfl sundays and then just blew up from there because i enjoyed what i was doing yeah so you this is you're you're speaking from experience this isn't just a textbook answer like that people need to realize like you lived this i did you you went in you did the that's exactly what you did at nbc sports and you worked your way up so i'm I'm happy to hear you say that because that is actually the advice that i give young people and i don't i i i say i can't offer you uh any in at impact wrestling i can't do any of that but i said look man every single independent promotion that's worth their salt now have some sort of production. Everybody puts their show on YouTube. There's always camera guys. There's always at least they got like a couple cameras here. They got a hard cam and a guy on the floor. Every- watch it too. Yeah. So it's like, yes. 
yeah. yes, every company, wrestling company, has behind the scenes people now. It's not like when I started in indie wrestling. It's like there's a ring, and then there's a guy press, presses play on the on the cassette player, and then I come down to the ring. Like there's production on all shows. So like there's opportunities out there for people to go and say, hey, let me help. Even if it's not a company like Impact Wrestling, independent promotions need that help. That's where you can get your foot in the door and um, just work your way up. Yeah. Just like just like the legendary David Sahadi. <laughs> just me. Oh man. I I don't I appreciate your time. You've given me you've given me more than the time that I asked you for. So I, I, don't I love you, keep, Cody. I don't, You're one of my I, favorites. I love you, buddy. Yeah, That's why I, I don't want to keep you much much longer. Um I guess I have one. I have one more question. Sure. Um, what does life after wrestling look like for David Zahadi? Um, I want to stay as long as he'll have me. Okay. But I also want to get in the realm of, of writing books because books can touch people. And I know that it's a lost art. Most young kids don't read books anymore, but I think that trend can change slightly. I want to be a motivational speaker, mm. uh, encourage people. I have no problems doing public speaking. I did earlier when I had no confidence, but now that I have confidence, I have no problem doing that whatsoever. I want to enrich people's lives that I love and those that I meet. And I think writing columns and writing books is a good way for me to go forward and spread out some positive messages and some, and some life advice. That that's what I think. I and I'm saying writing books, but I don't have it mapped out just yet. I I tend Cody just to let things happen to me. I get my my foot in a door and situation, and things happen to me. I never had a plan when I got to WWE F, F at the time that I was going to do A B C D E. I just said I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to treat these wrestlers like real sports athletes, yeah. and I'm think outside the box, and things just happened. Yeah. So the whole thing with Jeff Jarrett and TNA on my sabbatical, which ended up being, I thought it was going to be four months, it was a year and a half. Um, things just happen. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed that way. You know, uh, obviously there's many spirit angels that, that are guiding me and looking, uh, looking after me. Mm -hmm. I'm meant I, to do something more than just wrestling, Cody. I don't know what that is. I'm meant to touch people's lives. I know I have through wrestling. But I want to reach a, a broader audience as well. And exactly how to do that, I'm not sure. You know, I'm so sorry, my, my book, my first book about my dad, I think it's going to do really well because me too. it's a wonderful story about my dad and I, and also his flashback chapters, the other chapters, the other half, the even more ones, are just great moments in sports and entertainment history. Like when Joe Namath won the Super Bowl, when nobody gave him a shot in hell to do that. Yeah. Uh, there's one there about Muhammad Ali. Uh, you know, my dad knew him as Cassius Clay. Uh, drafting O.J. Simpson. He did a book on Peyton Manning. He did one on, on Clemson football, um, one on Frank Sinatra, an article. And there's just a lot of fascinating stories there that, you know, will attract people as well. So I like the duality of the book. Yep. Bring home from the hospital, October 2nd, 2020. Then one of my dad's flashbacks. Then a week later, then one of my dad's flashbacks, the alternating back and forth. I, I don't know how I came up with that idea, but I did. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. I just, I just want. Oh, want can to I listen? say one thing? Very last thing, very, very eerie. I always oh yeah, have, sure. Um, a black journal I take out with me whenever I go to bars. It's called Bar Wisdom: Lessons on Life, Love, and Hangovers. And anybody yep. writing, I got 151 of them. Yeah. In the back. Oh, code. You let's just pause because I want to make. I wrote here. I said again, this is you reading yeah. my mind against Hadi. I was like, I put a thing here. Plug Sahadi's Instagram. And which is at Sahadi three, mm -hmm. and you put a lot of your bar wisdom up on, I do, I on there. So, what you just mentioned, everyone's got to go check out right now and follow Sahadi three, yeah. and then you can see your stories. And you can I need to put some more because I haven't done any bar wisdom in a while, but some people watch that just for the bar wisdom quotes. Of course, they do. It's okay, yeah. so I just want to, I sorry, I interrupted your flow, but I, I wanted to, people to know AJ that. Styles one. Pardon me? Little, I might repurpose one of the AJ, Sor AJ Styles article. You give little when you give up your possessions. I might repurpose that one tonight. Yeah, man, for I've sure. I've never published that one on, on, on my Instagram account yet. Right. Why not? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so this is kind of eerie. I was, I was yeah. going through some of my old ones because one day I want to have that printed and sold at liquor stores, point of purchase. I think it's a no-brainer. Oh, cool. Um, I always have in the back like things to do or books to write. And 15 years ago, Cody, this was eerie. I'm going back and going back. And... I saw the title, My Dad, My Dying Son, S-U-N, 15 years ago. And I'm like, somehow I had a premonition 
that this is going to be brought into creation or maybe you're just writing that down at that time is what manifests that into creation right now mm -hmm. yeah wow dude well it, i know it made me cry when i saw that but it's just you know it's crying is good the, the deeper the love the deeper the grief well i i have all the confidence in the world you know getting today getting to go through some of your career highlights life highlights here mm -hmm. a lot of your your story and your your journey in life everything you've done that we've talked about today you like you did it your way you thought outside the box but you were successful at it everything every every everything you've done so i have all the confidence confidence in the world that you know your life after wrestling when you do decide down the road hopefully it's a long time because i want to work with you as long as possible Saadi. hopefully it's, it's it's a long ways down the road but when when you do decide to okay i'm going to be I'm going to dedicate myself to, to writing, speaking, whatever it is. I know you are going to be so successful at it and you're going to, and you're going to reach a lot of people and in, in a very meaningful and influential way. I know so. And I said, I know so because that's uh, manifested it into creation. Whereas when you say, I hope so, then you're not guaranteeing that it will. So I know that it will. I know it's going to touch a lot of people and oh, be an extreme man. success. Yeah. Thank, thank you for for doing this, Sahadi. I, uh, I appreciate you so much, thank, man. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate you so much, Shimon. This is awesome. This time flew. It felt like it was just 15 minutes we were talking. And so right? It's 5.40. <laughs> <laughs>
I just this past weekend had the big 30th anniversary event with Border City Wrestling. It was huge. It was full of stars, and it was an amazing night of action. If you want to check me out, both speaking and wrestling for the rest of October, let me tell you where I'm going to be. October 13th, I'm going to be in London, Ontario with Greek Town Wrestling. October 14th, I'm going to be in Oshawa, Ontario with Pro Wrestling Eclipse. On October 16th, 17th and 18th i'm going to be in eastern ontario on the 16th i'm going to be speaking in iroquois falls ontario on the 17th i'm going to be speaking in cornwall ontario on the 18th i'm going to be speaking in avonmore ontario then i'm hopping on a plane because on the 19th i'm going to be wrestling for new wrestling in st john's newfoundland and doing a seminar that day for some of the local wrestlers very much looking forward to that on october 19th the next day, I'll be in Gander, Newfoundland for a Horizon Speaking Conference. Then I got to hop on a plane and fly to Chicago. Why? Because it's the huge, big, Bound for Glory weekend in Chicago. On the 21st, we've got Bound for Glory. On the 22nd, we got the Bound for Glory fallout. Oh. You think I'm going to be tired after that? Well, I'm not done because just a few days later after that, I'm hopping on a bus with my buddies for CWF, Canadian Wrestling Federation, and we're doing a four-day tour on the 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, doing a northern tour in northern Ontario, northern Quebec. Then I'll drive home on their bus, and then I'll have Halloween with my kids, and my October will be done. Ah. <sighs> Does that schedule sound absolutely insane to you? It sounds insane to my wife as well. Oh, my gosh. Let me just put over my wife, my saint of a wife who puts up with me and this schedule that I have. And I got to put out this podcast content to you guys while all of that is happening. Oh, man, I'm insane. This is such an insane schedule. But let me tell you, I am not complaining. I'm really telling, sharing this schedule with you out of pride because it's only because of my amazing clients that continue to book me to speak at their schools and events and at visit chrisgrayspeaks.com. I I appreciate them so much. I'm so grateful for them. I'm grateful for Impact Wrestling and the schedule I have with them. I'm grateful for all of the independent wrestling promoters that have been reaching out to me at book Cody at Cody Diener.com. That's book Cody at Cody Diener.com and having me wrestle on your independent wrestling events, man, I appreciate you all hit me up on there and let me share my love of wrestling with you on your independent wrestling show. If you want to book me to speak at your school or event, or you know, somebody that might want to do that, tell them, Hey, check out Chris gray speaks.com. I got this guy, Cody Diener, that I know that's traveling around and doing this crazy October schedule. He probably can't speak at your school or event in October because he's super busy. But in November and December, we can make it happen. Thank you guys for all of your support. Thank you for continuing to rate, review, subscribe, and hit me up and let me know how much you're enjoying this podcast. I appreciate you so much. I'm looking forward to next week and next week's guest very different guest than david zahadi because i'm bringing you variety but just as cool just as neat just in a very different way follow me on at cody deaner on all my socials and i'll be introducing and making announcements soon on who next week's guest will be for this podcast that you are listening to right now and will listen to next week hopefully thank you in advance if you do because you are listening to Cody Diener on Wrestling Is Life Is Wrestling. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Is wrestling.